Underwriting for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Denonizer Technologies, providing the log industry equipment to simplify perfection. Great Woods Cabinetry, providing custom cabinetry and more from online to on-site. From Minnesota, an online resource for log enthusiasts. And Quality Manufacturing, building quality portable sawmills is in their reputation. Closed captioning for A Piece of the Woods was made possible by Shorter Log Home Supply. For today's project, we're making little stuff. A toilet paper holder, all right. a for a paper towel on this one, and a log bench that has compound angles on the legs, but we're only putting it together as we build it with 90 degree corners. But you'll see that, how we do that on today's episode of A Piece of the Woods. First on the list for today is our little bench. Now, making stuff with 90 degree angles is always the easiest, but it's always the most boring too. So what we've done, we've still made our bench out of 90 degree angles, but the legs are kicked off at 10 degrees one way, 10 degrees the other way. So if you look at it from corner to corner, coming across this way, this leg is actually kicked out at 14.1 degrees. But we still use 90 degree angles. First, we're gonna take our top of our bench and we're going to square that off and then we'll take the steps from there. Working with the log stuff quite often what you got to deal with is the fact that nothing's flat and as you see right here our piece rocks back and forth so I'm going to mark this about there and about there and I'm going to shoot a screw in here and here just to hold this out so it doesn't tip so I can cut it. That'll hold that even. Now the size of our tabletop, we've set this to make the absolutely best use of the scrap. So this is important. Actually, what's really going to make a difference is that we size things correctly, that we get legs the correct diameter to match so they look, look right with the tabletop and or the bench top. They're the narrow and a little bit longer, and it's going to sit about 12 inches high. So we want to get things proportioned right that way. Now, the second step that we've got here, we've got to set our relief cut on the bottom, or for the bottom of the bench, we're going to set the table saw at 10 degrees. Bring this over. We want to cut off just. We're going to come up about two and a half, two and three quarters inches high, and clip off the bottom corner of this. Now we're going to pull the fence just up about an eighth of an inch from the blade and lock it in right there. Saw is still set at 10 degrees. Now you just spin it around and get the other one. Now 
now what we have is exactly 90 degrees, a perfect 90, but on our bench, it's going to kick the legs out at 10 degrees. Now, that's cool. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that most of the parts we're using are just drops. This is left off from the tabletops, so that's left from there. And the legs that we're using are drops off a handrail. There is no such thing uh, as scrap. It just, no scrap. Going back to our little fence, we're going to set this at 10 degrees. And we have one more little fixture here that we're using just in order to hold the part. Because remember, the log work stuff, the biggest challenge is just being able to hold it safely and cut it. We've got this set. It's just a piece of plywood and a two by four. And we've got two screws that we're shooting into it to hold on to it. Lock that in there solid. We want a depth of cut on there, not quite halfway to the center of the log, a little less than half. We'll set it and lock it in right about there. Now we'll cut all four of them to the same height. Now the side that we seed here, this side is going to be finished side. So we'll, as we set each leg into our fixture, we'll hold it with the good side up. to put the fence and set it for the depth, the depth of our cut. We've got, we need at least two and a half inches of notch on here as far as the depth of the notch. That's about, and we're going to set it at three. And I know it would be nice to be putting a dado blade in here instead of just a single cut blade. I don't have one big enough to make that deep. So we're just going to use the table saw blade and it'll just take another minute or two. Okay, we have exactly 90 degrees. Isn't that nice? Now, even though it's 90 degrees here, once it gets on the little bench, it's going to be 10 degrees one way, 10 degrees the other way, which makes corner to corner 14.1 degrees. Yeah, okay, 14.1 degrees. That's because the same relationship that you have between a rafter on a house and a hip is quite, it actually is extremely similar to what we have between the leg going 90 degrees and square. So you got 10 degrees one way, 10 degrees the other way. It's a rule of 1217 but it's 1.41 times the one angle, so we get 14.1. Got it? Here is leg number three, and remember, turn it back, 10 degrees the other way, so we have two right legs, two left legs, and the blade is set at exactly zero degrees. We had it 10 degrees for the other part, the legs at zero. Now, we can mark these and drill them for fastening the legs to our bench. We're going to come down two and a half inches and call that the center of our little hole that we're putting in there. And we're going to run that in there just far enough so we can get a plug in it. About a half inch deep and we're going to be using little plugs like that after we put the yeah, that'll work out just fine now I'm putting the the holes for the plugs in here for the ease of installing the plugs it works very nice if they're if they're square or in line or f they're flat they go in 90 degrees in there okay but once we start putting the screws in here to mount it to our bench they will 
we'll use like three or four screws going a starburst out so we get lots of holding power. We've got legs, we've got glue, we've got some screws. We're gonna put it all together, smear a little glue on it. And I did drill a pilot hole for these big chunky screws, um, as I will do on each, on each one. I get uh, three or four of these in each leg, that's probably going to do just fine. Leg number four, and shoot him on there. And since all I've got left on this, or actually all that Josh has left on this, is he's going to stand the, the all the hand sanding stuff, flatten the feet and all that, so we can get on to the next project. Next on the list, we have this unique, very, <laughs> this isn't a beautiful, it's got so much character. We are after, at this point, a paper towel holder. And this branch right here, this one, this one will work very nice. We're gonna slide that up and put a washer with a pin down below here. So we're gonna save this one as long as we can. Of course, we gotta get rid of some other things on here. This one below it, I think will work really good for a um, um, pot holder little thing there, or, or a towel but we've got to cut some things apart. Really watch it on the bandsaw with this. Plan your strategy, your attack, before you cut it apart. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten off this bench. We're going to continue the slab into the legs. So there's a nice, flat, clean surface. I'll turn it around. I'll measure and find the shortest leg. And I'll use, once I've flattened that leg, I use that as a reference point with my level to flatten the rest of the legs until it's true and plumb all the way around. And it'll sit without rocking on our floor. You can build these so that they're as tall or short as you want. The one inside is a little shorter. We're going to make this one a little taller. And I'll complete it by using the belt sander here and finishing off the slab. I got to make sure and cut as much as I can so that the wheel turns against the outside finished surface. Otherwise, it's going to be blowing it out all the time. If I nick that, he's going to kill me. That is more of an art than science, but with a little practice, you can get it pretty close. Now I'm ready to turn it over. And it looks like it's I'll up. start leveling.
This is probably my least favorite part, but that's okay. They all live. It's just tricky enough that sometimes it'll frustrate you. Yeah, they're getting closer. You hate to get it wrong, though, because then the darn thing will rock back and forth, teeter all over the place. You might be wondering why I'm using the four-inch sander rather than the pelt sander sitting here. What we found is we're working on a part like this, and there's a chance that the part could shatter while you're sanding using the belt sander. Uh, we don't want to damage that glue joint at all, and putting a heavy impact against it might damage it, and we don't want to do that. <sighs> you got a pencil? I think I got a pencil. Oh, okay, right here. Kenny and I were four-wheeling on the lake yesterday, and I found this. How about that? <laughs> Give myself a rough idea where I'm going. I probably lost it earlier in the year. Giving myself just enough of a mark that I have kind of a point of reference. So I don't take too much off right off the bat. The mill is sitting right there. And with the mill, you just set this dog down, strap it in place, and zip. It's perfectly flat. But not everybody out there in TV land has a mill. So dad makes me do it this way. Real close. Go to the next one. Finishing this one up is kind of a walk in the park. We just got to flatten it on the joiner here. Just watch your fingers. Keep all of them, OK? have Josh run this one through the buffer once he's done with his bench and uh, get it all cleaned up. Yeah, that's real close. Yeah, nice. Now I'll just sand down to those four points on this side. And we'll be set. I'd like it to I'd like it to come down somewhere on the outside edge in this area here. Just quick check and see that I got that. But first I'll uh, chamfer the edge. What I've done is I put a pencil mark on these four points and the idea behind that, I guess, is so that if you have a heavy load on the bench, like if your mother-in-law came over or something, <laughs> it would still sit flat even if the bench was to flex just a little bit. Oh no, what if my mother-in-law watches this? I could be in big trouble. You'll probably have to take that out for sure. We'll be dead. I 
think I'm going to call that beauteous. Next step is belt sanding. This could be a little bit of a trick. I'm hoping that I'm able to do this, touch it up just enough that I can finish hand sand it without too much work, but not touch that surface. We want to keep that as nice and clean as we can. I think that'll do it. Just a little bit of hand sanding and uh, I think that'll be very, very nice. There, let's see how that works now. That, you know, that pulls off of there pretty free. Now, if it was binding at all, we would add a a wooden washer right here with a little wooden pin through it to hold it so so it wouldn't bind. But this will work just fine. Let's go back out to the mill for the next piece that we've got. We're gonna make a toilet paper holder. This fine piece is going to be our toilet paper holder. Chosen because it's got a nice nice back that'll get mounted to the wall and this is this beam that comes off the front here is big enough to split in half We'll bring this back into the shop and get it sanded down, cleaned up, and it'll turn out just perfect. You watch. Now we've got to use the fence to get the other part of it flat. Come on. Up you go. So we keep a 90 degree corner on the two halves, because they're going to have to join back together with the, the space for the toilet paper holder between it, but we got to keep our, our angles here and here, we got to keep those square. So we're going to track enough off of this fence to make that work. I don't like the fixtures that have them fastened to the sheetrock to hold to the wall. I like something substantial. They hang the thing on the wall so a little kid don't come along and stand on it and rip it off the wall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, a solid, well it's not so well, it is solid, quarter inch thick uh, piece of white pine for the back, but that takes a little rabbit cut in the back corner here and on this one and it'll be fitted in there. So when you fasten this thing to the wall, you can stick two screws in it right in a stud and nobody's ever gonna rip it off the wall, okay? All right, next step. We've gotta get the little holes in here for the little toilet paper, paper holder. So you put the things together, get them all matched up, go around to the back side of it. You see, I already have a little mark right here. It's all matched up. We've got a little mark right there. Goes from side to side. Okay, then we can take the one half, set it there, take the square, set it on there, and we'll come up to, let's see, if you can see that on the, we'll come up to three, three inches up from the mark. And then we'll come up four and a half inches, put our little center dot. There it goes, three inches up from the mark. Four and a half to the little center dot. That is what I said, right? Four and a half? Okay. There. And we'll drill a three quarter inch 
diameter hole there just a little ways in, enough for that uh, little pin to catch in there. And then we'll take and shoot the back on it. Whoopee. All done. We've got the little holes drilled in there. I've also got matched up lines here that I did at the same time with that other one. So when I put the back on it, it ends up squared. Shoot a little glue in there. Well, I got my deal. I think it looks really nice. I like it. And uh, we'll go see now how Josh is coming along with his finish up project. Well, looking pretty good there, Josh. You about have it all done. It even looks right. <laughs> we have our paper towel holder, even room for a, I had to steal it from the kitchen, a little pot holder, and our toilet paper holder and oh come on now get right there there we go remember the value of an object is entirely determined at the moment that you realize that you don't have it join us again next time for another episode of a piece of the wood for a copy of this episode or for questions and information go to www.apieceofthewoods.com closed captioning for a piece of the woods is made possible by shorter log home supply Underwriting for a piece of the woods was brought to you by Tenonizer Technologies, providing the log industry equipment to simplify perfection. Great Woods Cabinetry, providing custom cabinetry and more from online to on site. From Minnesota, an online resource for log enthusiasts. And Quality Manufacturing, building quality portable sawmills is in their reputation.